What's going on guys, Vince Setnair here, and today we are enjoying a nice cup of coffee in my Fast and the Furious mug, and we're also here to talk about the F-150 Coyote Generations. But before we start the show, actually, let's talk about today's sponsor. Bubby is a hound. He's four years old, and he is a sponsor of today's video. Make sure you give a like in the comments and description for Bubby. Oh, that go, blah, blah, blah. Now, the F-150 Coyote, similar to the Mustang GT Coyote, by the way, if you haven't seen that video, link in the description below, but um, <clears throat> has four different generations of the Coyote engine. You got Gen 1, which is 2011 through 2014. You got Gen 2, which is 15 to 17, arguably the best gen by some. And then you got Gen 3, which is 18 to 20, which has been very popular right now. And then last but not least, we have the 21 through the present day F-150s. I know the F-150 for 2024 did just get a little bit of a change, but it's still a Gen 4 Coyote motor. One last disclaimer before we start. I am not an expert, okay? I was a mechanic for two years, but that's about it. Okay, I was never a Ford mechanic. I was a Honda technician. I drive GM LS stuff. You know, Anna Banana has a Coyote um, Gen 3 Mustang, but I only do basic things to it. So take everything I say with a pinch of salt. I'm just a dude on the internet, having a good time, wearing a Bucky's Hawaiian shirt, chilling in his video game room, um, eating my coffee, and um, I had beans for breakfast. So good thing you guys aren't here. Gen 1 Coyote. We got 360 horsepower, 2011 to 2014, and 380 pound-feet of torque, which was excellent when you want to consider, you know, again, came out in 2011. What was out in 2010? The Mustang GT3 valve. What did that car make? 315 horsepower. So an F-150 was making more power, baby, more torque, than freaking the Mustang was the previous year which is really, really impressive. But yeah, regardless, 360 horsepower, 380 pound-feet of torque, 10 and a half to one compression. Um, this, you know, 2011 F-150 Coyote came out swinging. Let's talk about the Generation 2 F-150 Coyote. So from 15 to 17, we had the Gen 2 F-150. It's still port injection. There's no cylinder deactivation. Everything is driven by timing chains. A um, Couple of the changes included a different intake system and different rods. Those rods are actually a pretty significant upgrade and allow the Coyote, you know, the Gen 2 to hold a lot more power under boost. So um, pretty much rods, intake, and a couple other very minor changes. But overall, the Gen 2 Coyote was a nice step for the F-150, it was a nice step in the right direction. Gen 3, okay. Why are you know, the Gen 3 so popular? Well, for a lot of reasons. One, you got the 10-speed, the 10R80, which again, some people argue the six-speed is stronger. However, the 10-speed, let's see, you wanna make 7,800 horsepower? The 10-speed shifts really fast, and it, it really works well. If you're, if you're roll racing, the 10 speed is a really good option. And that's why you see you know, a lot of Mustang GTs with blowers on them beating a lot of other cars, especially if they're manual, especially if they're the older GM automatics. You know, they're just really fast. They shift really fast. They can get a little quirky, but overall, it's a pretty solid transmission. A little bit of a change in horsepower and torque. We got 395 horsepower, 400 pound-feet of torque, and I got my little list here. But essentially, I'm gonna go down the list. We have a slight displacement increase, so 4.951 liters to 5.035 liters, so a little bit of change in displacement. The compression was a huge change, and from 10.5 to one to 12 to one, and that is where you're getting a lot of that power from, right? We have a slightly larger bore, so 92.2 millimeters to 93 millimeter bore, and here's the big thing here, right? Still don't have cylinder deactivation, which is great. Still on timing chains, right? Which is very good. You know, metal is generally better than a belt. Um, even if it's Kevlar, maybe I'm a little biased. However, you had the dual fuel system. So essentially, the Gen 3 Coyote had port and direct injection. Well, what does this mean? Well, this means you could essentially go E85 pretty much right out of the factory. You had to enable it. But once you enable the E85, the fuel system in the F-150 could really support a lot of power, which means you have high compression, you have a very strong engine with strong internals, you have a solid transmission that shifts really fast, you can get four-wheel drive, an awesome fuel system. I may have said that twice, but regardless, 
coffee. You had a truck that is not only fairly simple to build, but loved boost and could launch off the line like a GTR. I mean, the Gen 3 is, I mean, unless you're hiding under a rock, it has exploded on YouTube. I would love a Gen 3, but I have too many vehicles, one of which you guys haven't seen and we'll see hopefully very soon. Um, and it's quite a fast one, I will say. But regardless, the F-150 Gen 3 Coyote, in my opinion, is the peak of the F-150 Coyotes in not only design, but an ease to actually build and make power. Yes, the Gen 2 has more potential. If you really put a lot of money and build it, at least, you know, that's my understanding from a, you know, a standpoint of, hey, can it hold the power? I think Gen 2 probably can hold the power more than any of the other Coyote generations. But Gen 3 is really close and is a lot easier to build. So I think as far as, you know, accessibility and building a F-150 Coyote or yeah, F-150 Gen 3 Coyote, I think that's probably the way to go if you just want to have a nice street truck or something that's super fast, but let's say not like built motor, built trans. If you want to just get something really fast for the street, you know, do a set of oil pump gears, get a really nice blower, maybe do a pulley change, go E85, I think Gen 3 is probably the way to do it. But that's just me, and I'm just the guy. So we covered the Gen 3 Coyote and all the really nice improvements it had and how easy it is to build. Let's cover the Gen 4 Coyote, okay? So in 2024, we currently have the 2021 through 2023 Coyote um, being tunable, right? The 2024 just came out, and while you can put a Whipple on it, I think that just came out, um, you can't get a custom tune yet. Now I know um, different companies, especially I know Lund Racing, um, I know Five Star Tuning, OZ, and then I think there's Livernoise Motorsports. They all have different tunes for the F-150s for the Gen 4, so it is tunable now, which is nice. Um, you know, truck had a couple changes, right, in, in that particular motor. Um, first change is horsepower, so 400 horsepower, which is nice, um, and I believe 410 pound-feet of torque. Got to double check that, but regardless, you know, get a little bit of a power bump, right? Uh, a couple of the unpopular decisions that were made with this F-150 were one, cylinder deactivation to save fuel. Um, it's not the same system that GM uses, it's not the same system that Ram uses because both of those systems are notoriously unreliable. And, and I love my LS stuff and I like my Hemi stuff too, um, but in the trucks, you know, they just had a lot of problems unfortunately with uh, cylinder deactivation. So, um, so far I haven't seen a whole lot of noise regarding you know Ford cylinder deactivation, but if it I wouldn't mind losing that extra mile per gallon to not have it personally. You know, I think less complexity is always better. Um, I don't mind a couple pieces of technology, but I think something like that to save a mile per gallon, it's not really worth it, but I do understand, you know, they are basically having to do that because of the EPA, unfortunately. Um, we'll see. Chevron deference, they get reversed though, so maybe we could see uh, maybe that take more of a aggressive trend and we could not have that anymore. I don't know, cross your fingers. Um, but regardless, not to go down that rabbit hole, but you know, regardless of all this, I think uh, the Gen 4 F-150, you know, Coyote is pretty solid. It still has all the things Gen 3 has, but it does have cylinder deactivation. The other thing it adds is a wet Kevlar oil pump belt, essentially, right? It used to be driven with a chain, now it's driven with a belt. Um, you know, Ford has significantly tested this. It's not new technology. Um, it is a Kevlar belt, it is submerged in oil, so it is a, you know, very well lubricated system. I don't think people will have a lot of problems with it in the near term, but I do worry personally about long-term longevity of a belt versus a chain. Even if it's submitted in, you know, submerged in oil, I'm sure it'll work for a, quite a long time. You know, I'm sure Ford's tested it. I would rather have a chain. That's just me. To me, the cylinder deactivation, um, you know, the amount of time it took to get it tuned, um, which most of them are tun tunable now, except for 2024. And, you know, the, uh, the oil, oil pump, essentially Kevlar belt are some of the reasons that I really think if you want to modify an F-150, really the Gen 2 or Gen 3 to me seems like the way to go. Anyway, overall, the F-150 Coyote platform in a nutshell is a very, good platform, no matter which generation you get from Gen 1 all the way to Gen 4, um, you know, all the F-150s with the V8 are good in my book, 
and I hope you guys learned a little something today from, again, the overview of the Generation 1, 2, 3, and 4 F-150 Coyote. And I hope you guys had a great holiday, 4th of July. Stay tuned for some more videos soon, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.